Hi there, this is Devlin Miles of Sweet Little Bloodhound, and this is SLB Indie Trailer, my soulful rock band's journey through the music industry. In season one, I hosted a Sunday night music series in Brooklyn called Putnam's Unplugged, available for download on sweetlittlebloodhound.com and SoundCloud. I learned a few things from other artists and decided to gas up for season two. So we are taking you on the road with us as we journey to Floyd, Virginia to see our favorite artists at Floyd Fest. Travel with the full band on tour from Massachusetts to Georgia as Sweet Little Bloodhound is nominated for Album of the Year. Witness a Broadway debut as we interview On Your Feet actor David Beta. And we get industry tips as we meet with casting director Judy Bowman and production engineers Dave Stoller and Andy Manganello of the Samurai Hotel. We hear first-hand experience from indie artist and Empress record label executive Rachel Sage. This is going to be a fun season. So let's get this sucker started. We're in for the ride, the ride of our lives. So come on, hang on, it's time to steam up. Hi there, it's Devlin. I want to thank you for listening and I wanted to explain where I've been. I decided to take the holiday season off this year because as an indie artist, you never really take time off. You're constantly booking and networking or working another job to make things happen as a musician. So I decided to actually just have some really low-key time and I family time and sometimes that's not easy. <laughs> so it was a good holiday season overall. I hope you all had a great holiday season and Happy New Year to you. And along the lines of a new year, a lot of people do predictions. So we're doing SLB predictions today. And it's a short little episode, and then we'll follow it up with a second episode release of Jabril Noor, Get to Meet the Drummer of SLB. So uh, please feel free to tweet us at SLBloodhound on Twitter or post a pic on Instagram. Let us know you're listening. Uh, We're happy to have you. Also want to let you know we have a hometown show in New York that's at the Cutting Room March 4th. Please get your tickets in advance. It's going to be a big one, and it'll the tickets will go fast. That's the Cutting Room on 32nd Street in New York, so you can get the tickets on our site, sweetlittlebloodhound.com. We'll link you to it. So thanks again for listening, and I hope you enjoy the predictions. Uh, we have a really great year coming up, and I'm really excited to be working with these musicians. Ciao. Hi there. This is Devlin Miles with SLB Indie Trailer, and we're sitting here with Sweet little bloodhound. We are here for our, our business meeting, first business meeting of 2016, and uh, I thought what would be fun is if we went around and we kind of did some predictions for 2016, some like SLB predictions, musical predictions, um, and maybe any personal predictions that you have going on. And a little bit different than goals, it's more about like something that you really for, foresee happening this year as opposed to, like I said, a resolution that this is going to happen. I mean, you can try to make the resolutions happen, but predictions, I feel like you're on track to make that happen. So uh, <clears throat> I'll just say a first couple that I've been thinking about to just get the ball rolling. And I think one thing that I've been researching a lot and been trying to book for years, like so I understand the pattern in the way, in the seasons and how they go and how, how early you have to book stuff for like summer season and we're way into booking summer season right now and this is January and it that really started in October but um so I my prediction for SLB is that we play uh 150 shows this year <laughs> you're good I was going to say nice. 50 <laughs> you're good, good. Nice. I was going to say 50 that way we'd have to well, rethink some 50. things if we get to that but I feel like that's attainable because that's like where you really you're crossing over into other things so that could be a goal but I, I feel like it's a prediction if anybody else have a prediction that they're going to tell them who you are here too today yeah, uh, this is Jabril um, I guess mine is uh, kind of a, a prediction but uh, nothing too major um, my girlfriend took me to see the big short the other night about the, the Wall Street collapse in 2008 and after the movie I was telling her that um, you know some of our other bands we kind of lived through that point where the collapse started hitting regular people because we would play outdoors a lot for tips and we got to a point where people were still coming and clapping and loving the music but they weren't tipping the way they used to and that's because they just didn't have that disposable income anymore and it really started
started to affect gigs for musicians on a pretty wide spectrum. But you know, we're now seven years removed from that collapse and the economy is finally starting to get to the point where regular people are feeling the upswing again. And I think we're gonna see, and we've already seen it to a certain degree that uh, you know, musicians' lives and, and gig opportunities and things like that are starting to get better. And I think they'll continue to get better for a few more years before somebody in Wall Street does something come next. Hmm. Love it. Darn right. My prediction? Yeah. Pain. Oh, 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 the manager's speaking from no. the other room. <laughs> I'm kidding. That was like my clever language. Uh, this is Charles Butterfield, the bass player of the group. And I think prediction this year, like, I definitely believe that we're going to hook up and do bigger qualities of shows. Um, I just have this feeling that we're going to run into a group that's gonna see us and be like, well, we want you guys to open up for us and we're gonna be exposed to like a lot of people or let's just say bigger audiences, you know, like of magnitude where they wanna start calling us and like you said, we're gonna be doing um, a lot of gigs and stuff. I, that's what I, my prediction is. We will be seen this year. Love it, I love it, that's awesome. <laughs> and heard, sorry. <laughs> somebody like a la Dave Matthews or something like that in our genre you know that or maybe not even in our genre and I've seen a lot of mix and matches where people are just like wait we like you guys so much we don't even care what kind of music you do just open up for us you know mm, that's cool so hopefully it'll go that way for us hey there I'm Chanel G. Jenkins I'm a trumpet player and occasional vocalist for Sweet Little Bloodhound uh, occasional <laughs> <laughs> what's that funny <laughs> what's that funny <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess uh, Devlin and Olivia kind of took my SOB predictions. Uh, I definitely think we're going to play. Um, I, my, I was trying to do the modest estimate, and Des Devlin just blew that out the box. <laughs> so I was taking 50, and Devlin's like 100. I'm like, okay, okay, great. And um, I do believe that since in 2016, uh, we officially are a new unit, that we're either going to produce a song or an entire album that can be submitted, not just submitted, but like genuinely considered, genuinely voted for, and genuinely make the Grammys for real. Um, I definitely believe that that'll happen for this one. Uh, in terms of musical prediction, uh, I, I just on Facebook trends and talking to different people and different bands, different gigs, I sense that and this year, you know, people are going to become more vocal about being hungry for live music, real music, authentic music. I think the wave also has kind of passed for people to be content with stupid music, for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. Music with not a lot of complexity, no stories, no chord progressions or anything. Pop music? And they're going to, you know, it's going to, you know, return to you know, listening for the real artists and what they're saying. So musically, I think that'll happen, which will speak volumes for us, you know, and really, you know, it'll be a good thing for the band because that's totally what we're That's awesome. I, I think along the lines of predictions, I would say definitely more radio interviews. I, I definitely see that happening. Um, I... I Absolutely seeing us doing a tiny desk contest submission <laughs> for NPR. Or that in the van thing would be nice too. Jamming in the van or cruising in the, the van? The van thing where they... Oh yeah, that was, good. that was Yeah. So we're definitely going to be doing the tiny desk uh, music submission within the next week or so. It's going to be signed, sealed, delivered. So we don't have Bishop here at the moment and um, Tony's on his way. So we'll get there at it 
things as we go along. Um, what about predictions for the podcast? Anybody have one? I know I definitely do. I have a goal. This is more of a goal. So we're in season two currently, and I have a few more. I definitely have a few more um, episodes to uh, release out there. A lot more with the band in it because they kind of. I had already had some interviews prepared before we all started touring together, so I'm a little backlogged <laughs> on the editing. But in terms of season three, I have an idea, and this I haven't mentioned this to the band yet, so I'm proposing it to them. And you are my witness, <laughs> you audience of it. Um, what I would like to do is for all of us, and maybe we can say right now, who some of our influences are, some of our, they don't have to be idols, they could just be influences, but they should be based within 500 miles of us so that we could get to them, that you could interview. So if Chanel said, had somebody that you would interview that person, some of the things you would like to know from them within New York or, you know, a 500 mile radius that you could reach out to and start the process. You know, you gotta get the email, you gotta get the manager, I mean, they're bigger than us because it's somebody that you've been inspired by that's probably a little bit more than inspired by Her reach would be a little harder. <laughs> so unless we can hire a medium, I don't think that's gonna happen. Yeah, a Ouija board. For <laughs> yourself. <laughs> so no no live influences right now. Maybe it could be from performance, it doesn't have to be necessarily. Not right now, I mean. Yeah. Pretty much. What's yeah. Turner? Is she within 500 miles? <laughs> no, she's not. She's in Switzerland. There you go. Yeah, she's going to say. So if you look and see if it's 500 miles, then there we go. Or even a teacher. Somebody that you've been, that you've been inspired by. So for me, okay. I will say uh, I definitely know Bette Midler lives in New York. Inspired me when I was younger. I would definitely like to reach out to her. Um, you were inspired by her too? Is that what it? Hey! After I That's... saw the rose, that was it. Oh, me too! It was, was like, the rose! That was it. That's amazing! It was the rose that changed the my rose. life. I was six years old and I'm like, I've got to do this. Rose so many times. It just kept coming on HBO and I just kept watching it, you know? It's crazy. Well, <clears throat> I now know who's going to be interviewing <laughs> the, the rose. We're gonna do it. We're gonna find her. What is not I will be there. That movie is very cool. So that's that's cool. So that's doable. Even indie artists, maybe. Anybody? We can think on that. I mean, I surprise everybody. The dead one. Mm. <laughs> I have to dig really deep. <laughs> yeah, I rarely have to dig. I mean, I thought you meant like celebrities and stuff. If it's just regular people, you know, honestly, still, I only have like one, two, three. Uh, my friend Jason Gisser, who I'm having a hard time getting in touch with because he's so busy, but he's got an inspiration. I've jammed with him before. He's, he's, he's a pretty slick soul guy, you know? Got his little soul brother sound going on. He's a musician. I would also like to get in touch with Grace Potter and Brandy Carlisle and interview them. They're on the indie scale um, watch list, I guess I would say. But, and I think they're also somebody that we could share the stage so and maybe that would be it who do you think that we would be appropriate opening for and reaching out to that manager and team to try to make that happen so that would be something but the whole part of the journey for season three would be like Chanel is pursuing this person and then you would just record a little bit I send an email for that have her back you know or like <laughs> like three weeks later have her back Oh, I finally got the manager. I'm, I'm making a call. You know, so it's... Ah, she blows! I don't know so. I'm not going to know him. <laughs> In this little segment, I forgot to add my prediction of going to the White House. Because I am applying to get us into the White House. Because, hey, you never know. Indie artists or not. Maybe we'll get to meet the Obamas. <laughs> Submitting us for a White House tour. <laughs> Have you been to that? Did you know this? Have you been to the White House tour? I know. I want to go. I want to go while he's in there. The president and everything. I don't know if you get to meet them, but. So, so she contacted you. You have to go through his office. You have to contact the senator. Okay. I don't want to be there when Bernie Williams or whoever the hell is. Who's the Bernie Williams? Bernie Sanders. Wait, that's not Bernie Williams. Bernie Williams. Hey! No, it's Bernie Williams! Who's Bernie Williams? That's cool. 
me Bernie Sanders president. <laughs> Not Bernie Sanders. Whatever. I want to go and right. Michelle and Obama are there, you know? Like, SLB Indie Trailer takes you right to the door of new music, where we pick up a few treasured passengers along the way. So buckle up and enjoy the ride as we take you on a journey through the music and entertainment industry. Sweet Little Bloodhound thanks you for listening and subscribing at SL Bloodhound or Sweet Little Bloodhound on the YouTube channel. Thanks again.